In our final lesson on Chapter 12, Metabolism and Bioenergetics, we want to consider pathway regulation. Keep in mind that in a metabolic pathway, it is composed of multiple chemical reactions, multiple enzymatic reactions. Some of those reactions will be near equilibrium. That is, there's a small change in delta G. This means only small fluctuations in regard to reactant and product concentrations. It might be favorable or unfavorable, positive or ne negative, but delta G is close to zero. So there's not a strong drive to proceed in one direction or another. There are other reactions, however, where there's a large favorable change in delta G. So that means they have a longer way to reach equilibrium and therefore a stronger drive to proceed forward. So if we influence the pathway at these large favorable changes in delta G, we can have the greatest impact on the pathway as a whole. The enzymes that catalyze these reactions that represent these large favorable changes in delta G often work too slowly. That is, they're often saturated with substrate, which rem remember means that the velocity is pretty close to Vmax. In other words, the enzyme simply can't go any faster. The accelerator's pressed all the way to the floor. The car can't go any faster. And so these reactions that involve large favorable changes in delta G are the best points at which to regulate the whole pathway. Imagine that we have several small streams that feed into a waterway. Those small streams represent these near equilibrium reactions. There's not much water flow. We could dam up all of those streams and not make much of an impact on the water flow downstream. If instead we have a large river, and that would be a reaction with a large favorable change in delta G, if we dam up that river, that will have a significant impact downstream. And if the enzyme catalyzing that reaction is working relatively slowly, then we can influence its activity and speed it up, or perhaps if we need to, slow it down more. So we can regulate the pathway flux or flow by adjusting the reaction rate of the enzyme. One way we could increase the flow through the pathway is just make more enzymes. More likely, however, we'll increase or decrease the activity of the enzyme by using allosteric effectors. And we'll see examples of this as we move along. This concludes our lessons from Chapter 12. In our next video lesson, we'll begin our consideration of Chapter 13 by looking at the two phases of glycolysis, and we'll look at possible control points in that pathway.